Hi, uh, this is Mark de Mezel. Um, I'm making a video um, about investing um, for you guys. Uh, it's been a very long time that I um, published a work of mine. Um, so um, I'll give you an, uh, an update. Uh, a lot has happened the past year. Um, mostly discovering Bitcoin and uh, implementing it uh, in my uh, portfolios. And um, I'm saying portfolios because uh, I've implemented Bitcoin in my variable portfolio and I have also implemented Bitcoin in my permanent portfolio. Um, but uh, I'm gonna make a big shift. Um, I'm busy uh, doing that. Uh, I, I had implemented Bitcoin uh, for only um, in the permanent portfolio, but only for a small part. So I just took um, you know 25% of each asset, so stocks, bonds, gold, and cash. But now uh, I had uh, instead of 25% gold, I took 20% gold and 5% bitcoins. Um, but uh, I'm gonna change that to actually 20% of each asset class. So also 20% Bitcoins. Eh? So 20% stocks, 20% bonds, 20% gold, 20% cash, and 20% Bitcoins. And uh, I'm pretty sure that many will not like that. Eh? So uh, this video is about why. So first the counter arguments. Uh, if you do 20% bitcoins, um, um, that will uh, add a lot of volatility. Uh, that's for sure. Eh? Um, since bitcoin goes up and down uh, in huge percentages. Eh? So when it goes up, it's not like with the stock market that it would go up 50% or 100% in one year. No. Or like gold, eh, they can do that, eh, 50% per year, 100% per year, that's possible. But with Bitcoin, it's 10 times more. Eh? It goes up in a, a 1000% and then it drops 50% uh, easily. Uh, so, um, and more. Uh, the, the, the drop in 2011 for Bitcoins was, uh, uh, it went up from... Uh, I don't remember the start price, but up to $30, it dropped to $2, so that's 95% loss. Um, so that's uh, that's possible with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have 20% Bitcoins in a permanent portfolio, uh, and there will be years that it goes uh, up a lot, uh, that's Bitcoins, and so the permanent portfolio goes also up a lot, um, but also there will, well, there will be certainly be periods and maybe even years where Bitcoin drops a lot and then the permanent portfolio will also drop a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, the volatility uh, today with the permanent portfolio is the worst year that happened was in Japan. In Japan was it 1981 with a drop of minus 13%. That's the worst year. The second worst year is a drop of mi minus 5%. Uh, it was for the permanent portfolio in Europe, I think in 2008. I'm not sure. But actually, uh, those are the worst years. So, uh, and all the other years, so for the US, that's over almost 30 years now, Eurozone, like all the other years, and in total that's about 150 years uh, in different climates, different periods, the, the permanent portfolio was... Um, only slightly negative uh, some years and mostly positive. So when it comes to volatility, the permanent portfolio is the best solution I have seen. Uh, it means that it's very low. Um, adding Bitcoin, uh, that's over and the volatility will go up. That's a minus point that I cannot uh, deny. Uh, and I also uh, am willing to, to accept that. Um, uh, another counter argument is what if Bitcoin fails? Eh? Uh, what will happen with the permanent portfolio then? Well, 
if you have 20% bitcoins and bitcoins goes to zero uh, uh, over a, a period of a few years or maybe in one day <laughs> um, well, then you will lose 20% of your capital. Huh? Um, is that uh, acceptable for the permanent portfolio? Um, no. But uh, it's not possible that it goes to zero bitcoins. Huh? Uh, even though it is very new, only four years old. Huh? Uh, the way it is built uh, means that it is impossible uh, to go to zero because that would mean that um, nobody values it uh, then it's zero which is not possible as long as it works uh, um, but let's say that it stops working let's say it's a technical problem that uh, that is possible uh, um, but um, then the value will shift to another cryptocurrency eh? uh, because what's the foundation of Bitcoin? It's an it's an anonymous digital currency. Eh? So 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 it's the only solution if you want to buy something illegal online, uh, drugs or 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 uh, weapons, or um, uh, something that is forbidden by law. Um, you cannot uh, pay with uh, cash yeah, because it's online. So you do need a solution, and Bitcoin is the only solution. Um, there is no other, you cannot use PayPal or your bank account because it's an illegal transaction. So Bitcoin is the only solution, and that's why it has... Um, intrinsic value and why it will continue to have intrinsic value because um, unless governments cease to exist and cease, cease to illegalize stuff uh, but that will not be soon eh? so um, until then eh, uh, there is uh, an absolute need for it and it will not uh, it can be illegal it can be made illegal by the government and tomorrow um, some governments may declare it illegal to use, eh? but that wouldn't, um, that might, then the value might drop seriously, eh? but um, it will not go to zero because there is still a demand for it, even when it's illegal. Eh? So um, that's why uh, I don't think it's fair to ask yourself if, what if Bitcoin goes to zero, because that's not possible. What if Bitcoin drops 99% in value? That is possible. Uh, it's the same with gold. Eh? Gold cannot go to zero, but it can lose 99% of its value. Eh? Um, and the same for stocks. Eh? Um, um, and even with bonds and, and fiat, with cash, these things don't go to zero, but they can lose uh, an enormous amount of value in a pretty short time frame. Eh? So... Um, and the same is true for bitcoins. So, um, but what, let's say, let's say that it's a fact, eh? that bitcoins um, uh, cease to exist in the future for some reason, technical, maybe, uh, maybe a competing cryptocurrency uh, takes over. Um, uh, what will happen with the permanent portfolio? Well, uh, again, uh, yeah, if it drops 99% in value, then you lose 20% of your portfolio. Eh? Uh, that's true. Huh? Uh, so, um, that's the risk. Um, so, um, but why, why do I put it in? for such a, a big amount, 20%, um, because um, I've tried 5% yeah, and it's not, uh, it's not logical. I, I, try, I started with 5% Bitcoin, 20% gold, but what is the problem? 
the problem is that, uh, well, I take away gold. Uh, so I have not enough gold then. Uh, and also it's not fair. Why should it be at the expense of gold and not at the expense of cash? Because Bitcoin is a replacement for cash too. Uh, um, and in fact, um, actually, uh, if I look at the future, uh, I think that something like Bitcoin uh, actually can become the next uh, currency, the a mainstream currency that we all use to pay bills um, and to pay other people um, and um, that we will not use a fiat currency anymore um, and, um, and that we won't even need gold uh, as a store of value because Bitcoin does a, a, a perfect job in that too. Um, and um, uh, that the need for investing goes down dramatically because um, Bitcoin uh, is a deflationary currency, as they call it, uh, which means that um, actually it's still inflationary. Uh, it goes up the amount of Bitcoins over time, but it goes uh, down percentage-wise. So today it's around 10% uh, every year, uh, extra Bitcoins, but actually drops by 1% every year. So... So it's nine next year, eight year after that, and, and already 20 years, it's below 1% every year, uh, amount of extra Bitcoins. And so um, at, so very quickly, we will, we will get a situation that the economy grows faster than the amount of currency being added, huh? which means that you have more products, more services, more um, real estate, more uh, land, uh, being um, on the market every year for uh, a lower amount of currency. So the value of the currency goes up. The, the currency can buy more and more every year. So um, that's why I really love Bitcoin. Eh? Um, when we had gold as money, that was really great because the purchasing power of your money remained constant, fairly constant, over time, actually, it kept its purchasing power. Huh? So even though a real estate could go up uh, in price, in gold price, during its times of prosperity, uh, it will, uh, in, in the next crisis, drop uh, again to uh, the same values. Uh, so you could always, for over like 400 years, a certain amount of gold would buy you always the same amount of real estate, but also the same amount of shoes or, 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 or uh, consumer items because um, um, the amount of gold added to the currency was 2% per year, but the amount of products, services also added was also 2% per year. So, so gold was stable money, but Bitcoin is even better. Bitcoin will not be just keeping its purchasing power. No, it will go up on average around 1-2% uh, per year. Hmm. So that's why I think it's really a genius invention. Um, and I think that the need to invest will go down eh? because uh, even when we had gold as money, I didn't study this. In the, I didn't study this. It's just a guess of mine. But I think the amount of people investing was much lower because if your money preserves its purchasing power, why do you need to go invest in stocks or bonds? Uh, who cares? Eh? Uh, that's just for someone who really wants to take some serious extra risks to make some serious extra buck. And um, most people are not interested in that. They have their own activities and problems they need to solve. Eh? So um, um, I think that will come back in the future when Bitcoin becomes the main currency. Most people won't bother investing. Uh, so, I think when you implement Bitcoin into the permanent portfolio, that um, it actually also, also um, should also be at the expense of stocks and at the expense of bonds. So, when I implement that 5% Bitcoin, I say to myself, okay, I have to not do it at the expense of gold only and need to do it at the expense of all the assets. So, let's say I take 1% of all the assets uh, and I, I give it to Bitcoin. So that would be 24% each asset plus then 4% Bitcoin. Um, why am I not doing that? 
uh, a lower percentage. Um, the big advantage of that is that you have much less risk. Yeah? So the permanent portfolio has proven empirically to preserve its purchasing power in every economic climate, uh, even in the short term. So that's a real amazing performance. So if I add only 5% Bitcoin, I'm not jeopardizing that eh? um, because um, there is some room for error. Even if Bitcoin fails and it's only 5%, then um, it's, uh, it won't be a big problem. And even uh, if, Bit and if Bitcoin goes to the moon, like uh, I think will happen, um, then, uh, then it's still also good for uh, the permanent portfolio because it still has 5%. Eh? So, so, so um, that's true. Uh, but why am I not uh, choosing that? Because I find it ugly. And I know that's not a strong argument, it's just an aesthetical argument. Eh? But I think the permanent portfolio. Um, needs to be beautiful too and um, beauty for me is uh, simplicity uh, clarity um, and I think uh, Harry Brown achieved that by uh, making it simple uh, he started with a complex portfolio but he ended up after fine-tuning it for over uh, 20 years he ended up with a simple split 25% each and I think I'm achieving the same when I add Bitcoin, I say a simple split, 20% each. Eh? Um, then I achieve the same beauty, the same simplicity. Eh? I cannot support this with a um, backtesting because Bitcoin is young. Eh? So I cannot backtest this and, say, and prove to myself that 20% uh, Bitcoin is the best solution. That's impossible. Eh? Um, however, uh, we can use logic um, and um, for me the logic says that indeed the volatility will go up um, the risk I don't think it goes up um, I think um, you have more risk of losing but you have also more risk of winning and actually Proportionally, uh, I think it comes out uh, strongly in favor of winning. So, yeah. And I also think that we must always uh, look uh, towards the future. And the future is actually that Bitcoin becomes mainstream money and that actually something like the permanent portfolio will not be necessary anymore. Huh? Um, so um, I think that uh, now doing 20% Bitcoin is uh, high, um, but I think that uh, if Bitcoin just continues to grow it the way it has, it will uh, very quickly become low at that 20%. Um, I'm, I'm thinking in five, 10 years, let's say 10 years time, if Bitcoin, uh, if Bitcoin succeeds in, hundredfolding another time or thousandfolding another time then it would not be one billion market cap but it would be thousand billion market cap at which point it would be clear that um, it will likely uh, replace fiat currencies and even gold over over time eh? um, so so, so there will be a point in the future where, where most of your savings will be in Bitcoin and not in a permanent portfolio. Eh? And only people that are rich eh, can bother themselves to diversify um, and have some stocks and bonds too. But the world will look very different because stocks and bonds will have, um, will have to offer a lot more value uh, in order to be able to compete with, with a sound currency as Bitcoin. Eh? So people will not quickly lend out their Bitcoins uh, for, a, for, a per, for a percentage. 
a point of, uh, of I, some people might, but I don't think it's going to be very profitable. So, so we still have to wait and see how, uh, how that will uh, pan out, stocks and bonds in the world of Bitcoin. But uh, I think uh, it is possible um, to do that too, but it will only be for people that are very rich and have um, um, and that um, want to earn more with their capital. Um, I don't think it will be required for safety purposes. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. It's I compare it with the gold uh, era huh? when people were uh, when gold was money and gold was stable already for for hundreds of years, sometimes up, sometimes down, but pretty stable in purchasing power. And um, even uh, rich people, uh, I I I think it's just guessing, but I guess that even rich people. Many of them didn't bother investing eh? in stocks or bonds. Why? Why? Eh? You can't do that, but it's not a necessity. Eh? So I think we're going back to that. So I think if you approach it from that point of view, uh, I think uh, Bitcoin is certainly deserves an equal place in the permanent portfolio than all the other assets. Um, uh, it's certainly equally important. Um, and um, yeah, then another word about um, the, the objective of the permanent portfolio. I have always sold the permanent portfolio to myself and others uh, as a way to protect your money. But actually, Harry Brown didn't emphasize that. Yeah, sure, he, he talked about safety, eh? but he also talked about... Um, actually, he didn't really talk about it, but many people in the permanent portfolio community today uh, find the performance of the permanent portfolio very good and very profitable. Eh? I've had a big discussion with people like um, Medium Techs about this and Pointed Stick. And um, uh, yeah, my opinion is that the permanent portfolio does not make um, only returns a fairly low percentage. So the average return of the permanent portfolio has been around 7% the last 30 years. So not uh, the 70s, but the 80s, 90s, and, and since 2000, it's around 7% per year. But I estimate true inflation around 5% per year. So there's only remaining around 2% real return, which I find very low. Um, and um, But they don't agree with that because they think that true inflation was not 5%, but only 2%. Eh? So, so in that case, you can say that permanent portfolio returned around 5% per year, which is... I agree, good, but I don't agree with the, the inflation estimate. So, um, so by by implementing twenty percent Bitcoin, um, I think that the permanent portfolio can actually um, achieve its intended goal, uh, as Harry Brown developed it, that you would actually make money uh, with that uh, portfolio after deducting through inflation. Um, so, so that's why I also feel uh, good uh, about adding Bitcoins for such a percentage. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I've went over several, uh, several arguments. Um, I'm always curious if you have uh, counter arguments. Um, uh, I'm sure I can learn from you guys too. Uh, and um, uh, thanks so much for watching. See ya.